Hello and welcome to Goldplon Day 2020. In this presentation, I will talk about uh, Plon 6 Classic, a short overview of what's new in that. So what is that? I said Plon 6 Classic. If you don't know that, Plon 6 comes in two flavors, peppermint and strawberry. And uh, the first one, uh, Plon 6, without any additional uh, nomenclatura, uh, is Plon 6 with the Volto front end. That is the new React-based front end. Um, and the other uh, flavor is Plon 6 Classic that has a server-side render template. So um, the main difference is in a uh, in Volto or in Plon 6, uh, the rendering of what you see in the browser is actually done by the browser. So it talks through a REST API with the server that gives the browser snippets of JSON and JavaScript in the browser then combines all this information to present you a beautiful front end and a user interface. Whereas in Plone 6 Classic, the same server does not send just snippets of JSON, but the final HTML plus uh, CSS plus JavaScript. And these, this HTML is then displayed in the browser and the CSS and the JavaScript is obviously applied. But uh, let's take a, a short step back, uh, a couple of basics about Plone 6. Uh, obviously, um, the, the most obvious change between Plone 5, 2, and Plone 6 is th that Plone 6 only supports Python 3 anymore. Uh, 3, 7, 8, and 9. 3, 10 is already supported by Zoop. 3, 11 is incoming. And Plone will add support for 3, 10 in the near future, I guess. We also, with the Python 2 support, we dropped and removed support for anything archetypes related. So this is finally uh, removed then. There are a lot of other changes. I'll get into them. Um, as I said, I'm not going to talk about Volto at all. There's hopefully great uh, presentations about that. This focuses on Plon 6 Classic, that is the server-side render templates using the Chameleon template engine. Um, and that means, as I said, that all rendering is done uh, well, the HTML com com combination is done uh, on the server and not in the browser. So uh, what changed compared to uh, Plone 5.2? Um, I'm sharing my screen here and I'm creating a new site when you have these, these, the, when you don't have a Plone site, you get the option to create a new Plone site that will create a site including whatever what is required for a Volto uh, site. And uh, you can create a classic Plone site that doesn't do that. I'll just do this. I'll switch to Eng English here as language to make it more accessible for everyone. Oops, if I find it, yes, here it is. So. Um, and I create my uh, website, and here it is. So this is Plon. So at first glance, you already realize a couple of changes. Uh, the most obvious one, uh, Plon uh, 6 Classic has a complete rewrite of the Barcelona theme using Bootstrap 5. So we use Bootstrap classes and uh, components everywhere in uh, Plon 6. And uh, a huge benefit of that is that you can reuse them, them as well. I uh, strongly suggest you watch a talk by Peter Holzer on World Plon Day about some of the uh, some examples for of the benefits that you can have uh, from using Bootstrap in, for example, listing views and stuff like that. Um, so everything you see here looks very much like the classic Barcelona theme but it has been completely updated and a lot of that has been rewritten. Um, so the toolbar to the left, for example, is also a, a rewrite. So it's, it behaves a little different than it used to be. So if you click, it expands and it retracts. If, if you click outside or just press escape or the, the X up here, you can pin it uh, using the the little pin here, and then your content uh, gets resized that you always see your content. Uh, this is uh, implemented using the off-canvas feature of Bootstrap 5. So the, the whole idea is to 
not try to reinvent well maybe not the wheel but a toolbar and write and maintain uh css and javascript uh to 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 do that uh and have that run safely and well on all kinds of browsers but use something that is already tested and works uh, obviously well so this is why we use the off canvas feature here uh, in the toolbar as you see when you expand something you have the obvious add menu i'll add a document here a oh, new document i'd say add some text so you see that this is all uh, working as it used to so there shouldn't from an editor point of view there shouldn't be too many changes uh, but also the even the views uh, well, maybe not even the views. Also, the views have been updated. I'll show that for a news item. A news item. Oh, text. Some text. And the image. Uh, in the image field. Uh, what shall we use here? Golden Gate image. And you see that the image is displayed in a different way than it used to be uh, previously. Um, so all these templates have been changed, updated to fit better with uh, current uh, best practices, mostly regarding uh, mobile use of websites. So if you uh, make that smaller, the toolbar automatically retracts, for example. Um, I'll go back to the document. You already saw when I click that, make that smaller. So the toolbar, as I said, is a off canvas element. Um, the navigation in the mobile, uh, the mobile navigation is also off canvas. So this is one of the default features of uh, Bootstrap 5. You have a nice off canvas uh, mobile navigation that works well here. And the, the search is included in the mobile navigation. So if you say here, clone, um, or maybe news, uh, then you get results. And uh, the live search has image preview. It's a new feature uh, that you can uh, configure and, and uh, disable if you want, if you don't like it. And you can change, uh, modify the size of the image scales. Uh, if you're not happy with the default setting. Uh, so that is a really nice mobile navigation. It works uh, really well. Uh, you can see that well on the demo side of uh, that is, no, the six. So we have these demo sites, by the way. So six, uh, clone six, ah, demo.clone.org. I mean, and there are links to other versions. And if you want to see the current state of Plone 6 uh, Classic or Plone 6 uh, Volto, that's here. But so Plone 6 Classic, that's what I'm talking about right now. You can just click here and you get the URL 6-classic demo Plone org. And you see that here, uh, the navigation, even with more content, the mobile navigation works nicely uh, on all kinds of devices here. Uh, okay, so this much about that. Um, there is more. We have, if you, maybe you've realized that, if you know Plone well, if I remove a, little, a lot of text here and just have little content in it, in older versions, the footer would then be here and there'd be white space. Now we have a sticky footer. So the footer is always at the bottom of the page. Obviously, if your text is longer, the footer moves to the bottom. It's not sticky like always visible, but sticky to the bottom. Uh, if if uh, So the white space is here below the content. Um, then <clears throat> we have, uh, as you saw during editing, we still use the same a tiny MCE editor. We updated it to Plone uh, to Tiny MCE five. Um, we will probably soon support Tiny MCE six because that was just released two or three weeks ago, and we'll need to test and update that. But uh, the final version of Plone six will hopefully support uh, use the uh, Tiny MCE six, which has doesn't have a lot of changes it's mostly bug bug fixes and uh, cleanup so they are removing deprecated uh, stuff um, whereas the change between tiny mce 4 and 
and five that we're using now was basically a complete rewrite um, of Tiny MCE. So this uh, expect a much better user experience here with Tiny MCE in various contexts. So um, has some funny features. I'm going to show you one. So this is not Tiny MCE specific, but if you if you have text. Um, that is longer, long, and you want it in columns. You can obviously use mosaic or, what, or whatever with it, but you could also say inline text in three columns, and this paragraph then has three columns. It's just a CSS feature that we added to the uh, to the uh, tiny MCE style uh, um, configuration that is easily uh, configurable and updatable. There's the old tiny MCE control panel that everyone who knows Plone should uh, will st uh, still still knows. There are some formats, there's like the plugins, and yeah, these are the most important ones, styles, and you can extend this feature here. So here are the text column dash three, for example. Um, okay, so when I say we're using Bootstrap um, 5 in Plone Classic, that means you can use Bootstrap 5 in Plone Classic as well. Um, just to show you that, we have a page called Test Rendering um, where we include uh, the whole Bootstrap cheat sheet. So Bootstrap has a documented cheat sheet where all the styles, uh, typographical and, and so on, and features of Bootstrap are included. And you can see how they appear in a default plum site by going to test rendering. And you can inspect that and see the form uh, stuff and so on, like crazy forms that you can build with that headings, buttons, whatnot, uh, drop downs, and so on. Here is a drop down. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's a nice uh, helper for you if you want to re reuse these uh, Bootstrap 5 features. There's also the Bootstrap uh, JavaScript that we're sh uh, shipping. Uh, for example, the modals here, there's a modal. Uh, this obviously uses some JavaScript as well. This is also included in uh, in, in default clone, and you can make use of these features and check the documentation for how does a model in Bootstrap 5.1, in this case, work, and uh, just use this feature in your own projects. That is uh, probably helpful. Um, so using Bootstrap, a theming of Plone became much easier. I'm not going to go into detail there. I suggest you watch a uh, the theming training that uh, Peter and Mike and Stefan uh, did. Um, you can learn about that. Uh, it is when you develop Plone. That's also it's been gotten much more accessible and uh, approachable to develop the theme, just NPM install and NPM watch, and you get automatic hot reloading and stuff like that. So that's really nice to work with the theme. Um, talking about NPM, uh, a huge thing that went into Plone uh, with uh, the newest alpha release of Plone 6, that is uh, 6 alpha, uh, Plone 6 alpha 4, uh, was the complete rewrite of the JavaScript story of Plone Classic. So uh, we removed all required JS, uh, updated all of the patterns, and modernized the, uh, the whole JavaScript code that we have. So that's they, these are now sane ES6 modules and have JavaScript default imports and stuff like that. So that was a huge effort, and it's made the classic stack uh, future-proof uh, with regards to user interface and JavaScript uh, development. And I'm really happy about that. Um, the um, mockup, which is the package that contains these JavaScript tools that we use, for example, to build the folder contents page where you can move stuff around, um, is now... Um, a, uh, a NPM package and no longer a Python package, uh, which makes it, yeah, a lot saner than it used to be before. But there's more. There's obviously a couple of features uh, for users. 
uh, or visible to users and editors. Uh, one is I'm going to switch to the demo side again to see that so I don't have to create demo content. One is the new icon resolver that helps you to, um, to display uh, icons for content types. So on the demo page, switch to English here again, uh, there is uh, examples for every content type that's available in Plone 6 by default, and they all have new shiny icons and can be used. I'm going to log in there so you can see the same feature in the uh, ad menu. It's also used. Uh, it's in, used in folder contents. Oops. Yeah, it should. There might be. Yeah, um, there's still a tiny thing to do here, and there. They are in the ad menu and you can create your own content types and uh, use the icon resolver to that. Uh, talking about icons, we're using shipping uh, all the bootstrap icons with um, Plone. So if you want an icon for your content type or in a page or s somewhere, you just pick one of the really, I think, really good and uh, large icon collection of bootstrap and uh, you can use that. And it, this is already well documented in the plant documentation, uh, the new icon resolver. Um, we also have new image scales. So we updated the image scales in Plone 6 and the same hopefully will apply to Volto. Where, am, where are they here in image handling? So here are new image scales. Uh, starting from listing, which is like a tiny icon, to huge, which, which is 100, uh, 1,600 pixel, pixels wide. So that's actually pretty huge. Um, and something that is not merged yet, but will be soon, is a source set feature, so that you can use a source, the source set feature uh, for images, for example, in your templates. Um, there is a, another interesting feature that's the de dexterity text indexer. So if you create a new content type, uh, let's demo this. So in Plone 6, you can obviously still create your custom dexterity content types. I'm going to add a new one. It's going to be, a, let's say this is pork. Edit. I have the talk. I'm going to add a field. Let's say this is a new field and it's going to be some text. This is going to be rich text in this case. By default in Plone, the content of this text, when I add this con this uh, an instance of this type, would not be, um, so here's my talk, uh, would not be searchable by default. So let's add something here. Uh, secret text. Talk. Save. Um, but uh, we moved a feature into core where we now have a behavior. Um, let's see where it is. It should be under. Uh, where is it? Let's look for the name. I don't know it by heart. Constraints. So many features. Dynamic searchable text indexer behavior. So I was looking for a S, but it starts with a D. Dynamic searchable text indexer behavior. Save that and go back to my fields. And when I configure my field, I now have a button called searchable. I can click this button, save. And obviously after I edit the talk, because indexing happens after I do some event, boo, save then the word secret, when I uh, search for the word secret, I'll go to the front page and say secret, should show up. The talk now shows up because this field is now searchable. And the same feature applies uh, to all kinds of fields where you have text, obviously, images are not searchable uh, by default. And so that is, that's really nice. And it's a powerful feature that uh, is now, um, we're happy to have in the default of Plone. Uh, there is more. Um, by the way, the uh, searchable, the searchable text uh, feature uh, is not uh, constrained to Plone Classic. It is a feature of the Plone backend, and the same would obviously apply to a Volto page. So, if you have a content content type that 
has text that where the field is searchable now volto can obviously also search for that because this the back end is the same another thing that is uh, the same is a um, new f feature for relations there is now a user interface for relations where you can select and inspect relations i don't have any relations in this site uh, maybe in the demos, uh, probably not even in the demo side. Uh, that has been in Plone 6 since Alpha 1, I think. Um, there is also a new uh, relation module in Plone API, the Python uh, API of Plone. Um, that, yeah, I'm not going to go into that, uh, where you can work with the relations. But that's it's not a feature, it's a, f yeah, it's a feature of the API. Um, Big change is that uh, the Plone site itself, you see, I'm looking at the Plone site itself, is now a dexterity object. So we have, uh, when, when you edit the front page, uh, you don't no longer have a default page on the portal uh, that was like the default setting in earlier versions, but now you have a, uh, a, a the Plone site object is a dexterity content type by itself. So we'll come um, to Plone 6. If I'm able to type full uh, and here, looking out some stuff and yeah, this, that give that some text. And you can see said that the plone site itself is now a plone uh, a um, a dexterity content type that is a major change in the back end that uh, is automatically done when you migrate a site and is a requirement for volto that doesn't support default pages so uh, to have a, a same uh, default page in a volto site this was required to not have any crazy hacks in there uh, we also removed a lot of uh, cyclic dependencies in the code base by adding a new package that's called Plone Base. It holds interfaces and some utilities. So for the developers, you might uh, need to update a couple of imports. At um, there is obviously <coughs> deprecation warnings. You can still use the old ones, but after Plone uh, at for Plone Seven, these uh, the old imports will be then be cleaned up and removed. Um, so to sum up, Plone 6 Classic at first glance looks very similar to uh, Plone, Plone uh, 5.2, for example. Uh, but, oh, I've, I forgot a small feature. The, uh, the search, the live search, is now inside the navigation toolbar. So it's a bit more cleaned up. It has a uh, less, less cluttered feel, the first impression. So we didn't go for... A uh, huge overhaul, and this is, looks completely different, and it has a new theme. Um, we didn't want that because obviously the new face of Plone 6 is the Volto front end and not Plone 6 Classic. But uh, a lot of sites, a lot of uh, projects use Plone Classic, and there's nothing wrong with, with that whatsoever. Um, and we wanted to give these projects and the people who are working on these uh, the best developer and user experience that they can have with a server-side render template system. And we thought that modernizing the JavaScript stack and using Bootstrap as the default uh, is the sa sanest way to do that. And I think we gotten quite a long way uh, there. So... Um, this is it, and we hope that uh, Plone 6 Classic will make the life of readers, editors, developers, managers, admins uh, a lot e easier for the future. It's obviously also much faster uh, than older Plone versions, and uh, thanks for your uh, interest, and thanks to all the developers who put in so much time of their lives into making Plone 6 Classic uh, the way that it is right now. Thank you.